Good afternoon. Uh, good to see everybody. It's uh, it's spring. Has sprung finally. Uh, hmm. Pretty soon it's going to be in uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, and well, that might be a little bit too hot, but we're going to feel a little more comfortable as we move along. We always go through the wet, clammy days. I have a uh, artist friend of mine, a guest, James Wong, who I met uh, at the New Hampshire Institute of Art. We were doing Saturday Live group, and, and uh, somebody invited me, and uh, I went in, and I got addicted to it because I find it to be very rewarding drawing. So I've slowly picked out artists uh, to have on the show, and you know I like to have a variety of artists and their diversity. And James' work uh, fits right into what he's been doing for I don't know how many years, at least eight, because you've been there every year. I've been in there probably longer. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you to James Wong to my right. And there you yeah. are, James. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me explain uh, something about my background. Uh, I recently retired in the beginning of 2016, and um, and I was from the high tech industry uh, as a field application engineer from the semiconductor business, and uh, and um, what made me uh, retired uh, is the fact that I had a, a triple bypass heart surgery back in 2014 which uh, led me to be uh, two months of uh, short-term disability, which gave me a, a, a little bit of time to uh, go back to my art uh, passion of painting. And I, so I started painting more with my spare time. <clears throat> then I finally, when I finally retired in the beginning of 2016, um, I went back to my hobby passion of painting, which is acrylic painting and oil painting. And I'd like to today show you some of my works I've done within the year and a half or so. So uh, my first painting is an acrylic painting. It's entitled Parrots on the Big Island, Hawaii. It's uh, painted on a uh, 30 by 24 wood panel. And you'll see that it's, it's a very vibrant uh, color edition of the painting. Uh, showing um, three parrots that are almost lifelike in size that I attempt to make on this painting. And, uh, and it, uh, it's against a backdrop of uh, neutral gray uh, color stones. And the painting is done in heavy body acrylic over a gray undertone that I first applied on this painting. Uh, so the colors are vibrant, so I use cadmium reds, cadmium yellows, cadmium orange on those, on those parrots. And then there's cobalt blue on the tail of the parrots. And then you'll see the, within the middle of the branch of the wood, I try to make it as realistic as possible. So it's a more linear painting, less abstract. And every leaf in the background is painted uh, in detail, so that took a while to paint the uh, details of the leaf. Over on your left is a uh, palm tree. Uh, so I have some impasto texturing effect on the uh, bark of that tree. And um, so then the rest is um, uh, detailed. Uh, also on the uh, tripod, I painted a little metallic uh, finish on it using a silvery ir iridescent gray uh, acrylic. Um, so uh, that okay. I it's a beautiful painting. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was based on a photograph that I'd taken in Hawaii about uh, back in February. Um, I have another photo too uh, on this one here. Um, if you want to pan this one, this is a this is also another wood panel I did. Uh, so <clears throat> on this one, uh, this is also a 30 by 24. Uh, That's an ocean scene too, right? Yeah, seascape, a 30 by 20, 30, 24 uh, seascape painting, also done on uh, heavy acrylic 
uh, and then I also use the same thing, a technique of using uh, gray undertone. Uh, again, it's uh, big, huge waves, over 10-foot waves in the Big Island in Hawaii uh, at Hapuna Beach, spelled H-A-P-U-A-N-N-A. -A uh, People I, surf that too, don't they? That's oh, incredible. Yeah. All right, yeah. So uh, I try to get the value colors right. So uh, you'll see in the background, it's a nice, bright uh, blue sky. I use a dash of cobalt blue mixed with white there. And then uh, I use a lot of uh, impasto text texturing within the waves. So you'll see a lot of white edges here and more so on the uh, foreground. So the foreground is painted with uh, white mixed with grayish and black and grayish uh, contrast, contrasting the white foam on the beach. So it gives you a nice 3D dimensional type uh, textual effect on the foam. Uh, and then the uh, ocean waves, I uh, use my own imagination to make it more dramatic by creating concave and convex angles within the, the wave of the, the, the ocean wave here. Um, more uh, action, more movement there. When right, you do yeah. That. And so there's not really too many colors like on the other painting, but it's, it, there's a few colors, uh, common colors of um, sap green and verdant green, along with a lot of blacks. And this rock is kind of give you uh, a smaller, uh, bigger magnitude of the ocean wave compared to this small rock here. Uh, jutting on the side here. Um, so, um, and this is acrylic too, right? Yeah, again, this is acrylic. I, I use a lot of heavy body uh, acrylics on this painting, like in the previous one. What brand do you use? Several, uh, or you got one in particular? I use uh, a lot of Liquitex. Liquitex, that's uh, good. Heavy body ones. and um, Also expensive, right? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Uh, the other one I use also is the Chroma A AX one uh, for the uh, di uh, the cadmium reds and the cadmium yellow. It comes in eight twos of a set. Uh, I had to order them off. I usually order them offline because they don't have them. Have you ever tried Golden? Acrylics? Golden? Oh yeah, Golden is a good one. Yeah, uh, it's it's a um, their primaries are a lot different yeah, than yeah. They comes in big uh, tubes. Yeah. yeah. I use that too for uh, the airbrush paintings. I sometimes too. Oh, you airbrush? Yeah, I do some airbrush on just for de some of the details, like on the rocks. I just try to do a little airbrushing, but I didn't see too much of an effect on it. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. fascinating world of art, isn't it? Yeah. But you know, you had your double bypass, and then you retired, yeah. and then yeah. suddenly Jim sat down and and probably had this urge to paint and draw and create, and and yeah. you certainly uh, you've come to that point. Yeah, so yeah, so these are 30 by 24. Uh, what they call these are called uh, wood panels that pr you're pre gesso, already pre primed with the uh, gesso white. Now, you say an yeah. undertone for, yeah. for so what do you paint your entire canvas? I noticed on, on the parrot yeah. you said something about a gray, the whole yeah, it's a neutral gray color because mm -hmm. uh, I like to start off with a whole neutral gray color. So, and then uh, build, build and then on you that. build up on that, yeah. So rather than it being a stock white background, uh, foreground, or start up with a stock white color, it tends to be uh, to be too dramatic, um, too too an extreme color of the spectrum. So you want to make it a, a neutral kind of try and simplify it a little bit. Neutral setting color yeah. before you paint. I yeah. I've read where Da Vinci used to use uh, oxides and uh, dark reds and things, yeah. and then he would that's how he'd bring his colors out, mm -hmm. uh, and then gray. Now I've never heard of using gray, but yeah. that's that's a thought. Yeah, I, yeah, I mix it with uh, titanium whites and yeah, not uh, a dark gray, but a, a tint. You said so. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, the mixture. So I Here, have another me, one that I with that. Okay. All right, I'll bring in the Bruce Lee one. All right, here's another 30 by 24 paintings. Um, so this is uh, from next, the next uh, seven paintings I have is, is based on portraitures. So my uh, famous- Bruce Lee. Idol hero is Bruce Lee. 
So in this painting, um, again, this is heavy body acrylics, uh, starting off with a gray tone again. Uh, this, this is the title of this painting is Bruce Lee and his nun, nun, nunchucks or nunchaku you call it. It's a, uh, it's based on a Japanese weapon and in, in the, um, as, as has its origins. And he sure knew how to use them too. I'll say oh, that. Yeah. So he was a phenomenal is, athlete. Yeah, this is uh, kind of a base on a, on the movie uh, Way of the Dragon, or that was released in Hong Kong, and then it was released in the States in the Return of the Dragon, back in the late seventies. Um, so again, this is a heavy body of acrylic. Um, uh, there's a lot of. Uh, dark shadows and uh, painted here. It's almost like a, in the same style of uh, the Italian Renaissance painter Caravaggio, who uh, uses a very uh, intense contrasting of light with uh, dark shadows and painting. So, so I try to um, paint with that type, type of style. So you notice there's like a heavy dark shadow here and um, a lot of heavy uses of black so, uh, in fact, um, I layer on a, th a thick layer of uh, heavy acrylic blacks to my painting. And in fact, I actually use a knife, use a lots of uh, acrylic painting to rough edge the, the the wood panel. Actually, the wood panel is is a smooth pan is a smooth surface, um, so it doesn't absorb as much as uh, the canvas type uh, material. So this will uh, kind of gives it a, a much more rougher finish. And, and then uh, you'll notice here that uh, the way the light shines on the chains, uh, those are painted on an iridescent silver color to make it more metallic looking. Um, What's the name of that? Is it a Liquitex? Yeah, that's also a Liquitex. Because uh, I think I'm going to go out and iridescent buy Iridescent silver, yeah. Iridescent silver? Yeah, I'll I try that. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you want to make it contrasty. So, again, there's a shadow of the chains. Um, and it's not overpowering either. Yeah. When you say iridescent, you know. Yeah, you right. And uh, I positioned the figure uh, portraiture uh, uh, about one third or two thirds to the drawing to generate more interest. You never want to put a portrait that's centered, dead centered on. But then again, you have the nunchucks, you want to also show those sticking out. And uh, so in a way, you have to have it uh, a little bit off-centered right. to make it uh, more uh, dramatic looking. <coughs> um, there his uh, shirt also have a heavy heavy uh, blending of whites and blue here, so it's um, painted. You like, you like the palette knife too, don't you? Yeah, I use a palette, yeah, right, a palette yeah. knife. I, I kind of like, um, if you'll notice on this side here, you need more noticeable that's uh, it's roughed out here to make it uh, more dramatic. You put a varnish on on your work when they're done. A varnish? No, um, not on acrylic. You could probably do it on oil. Yeah, or in oil yeah. you do that. Yeah. If this is water base, uh, I didn't. But uh, on oil, I don't either. But uh, yeah. When you say black, yeah. Now to an artist, you know black and white are not <laughs> colors. I have a friend that says, yeah, oh yeah. "What? Well, yes, they are." Well, he's a, a painter like I was for years. We commercial, industrial, residential painter. Mm -hmm. And when what color the clerk would say, white, but white is not.